Hey guys, Ryan Lebron here, September 11th, 2022. It's a Sunday. Uh, kind of early in the morning. I think it's somewhere around 7.30, I guess. And as you heard in the background, my chicken, my roosters are crowing already. Anyway, I've done a video recently uh, about building a toggle feeder system for the chickens to eat that would be weatherproof and waste less. And, uh, well, the turkeys took to it quite well, but unfortunately the chickens have not. Let me turn the camera around and show you what's going on. All right. Now, this is the toggle feeder system. If you look just under the bucket, you see the little chocks of wood held in place by a steel eye bolt. The idea was that the chickens would come up under there and peck at that little chunk of wood or PVC if you wanted to do it that way. They would peck at it and the food would drop into the little feeder pans that we got set up. Well, that's been probably a couple of weeks ago now that we've done this. And although it is definitely weatherproof, the weather's not getting in the feed, unfortunately, it's not waste less because what's happening is my wife and I come in here, wiggled the toggles around, got the food to drop in the pan, and they're coming up into the pan. They're standing inside of the food pan. They're pecking at the grains that's falling in the pan, but they're all still, still scratching at the food, spreading the food out of the pan by scratching at it. Well, I personally don't like that because chickens are natural scratchers. There is nothing you can do. Guys, there is absolutely nothing you can do. And I do mean absolutely, positively, 100% nothing you can do to keep a chicken from scratching. Now, I know this. I don't mind the chicken scratching. But I don't like it when they stand inside their food and scratch and get the food all over the place. I personally don't like that. So although the toggle feeder system has worked out very well for our turkeys, the turkeys have caught on to it quite well. Uh, it's not working so much for the chickens in my opinion. So this morning, I'm in the process of building a new feeder system to try out for the chickens. Let me bring you inside the shop and show you what I got going on. <clears throat> Hang on a second, guys. What's up, babe? Turn the water on. They're out of water. All right, give me just a moment. My wife just now asked me to turn the water on so we can give the turkeys and chickens some water. So y'all give me just a moment. I'm going to help her with that, and then I'll bring you video back into what we're doing with the chickens. All right, guys. As I said just a second ago, uh, the uh, toggle feeder system for the chickens is not working out as well as I wanted it to. <coughs> They uh, they climb inside the pans at the bottom of the feeders, and as they're standing inside of the food pans at the bottom, their bodies are hitting the toddlers. The food's coming out, and they're still st once the food comes out at the bottom of the food pan, they're standing inside the food and they're still scratching around. <clears throat> Chickens are natural scratchers, as I just said. I personally don't like the fact that they're scratching their food around instead of just standing there eating it. But there's nothing you can do to break a chicken from doing that. Nothing. So, <clears throat> this morning, I'm working on a different project. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to call this one yet. But let me go ahead and show you what I got going on and show you the basic design. And uh, I'm going to bring you in and out of different phases of this one, too. So let me get the camera turned around and show you what we got going on. All right, guys, as you can see, I got this large Tupperware tote right here. <clears throat> I just bought this at Home Depot yesterday. And I took, I bought a hole saw, this hole saw right here. You can buy these at almost any hardware store. We, had, we, we were already at Home Depot, so we just bought the hole saw at Home Depot. Uh, you can get them at Menards, Lowe's, or possibly your local hardware store, like, I don't know, like Bob's Hardware or whatever. Maybe, maybe even Napa or something like that might have them. I don't know about Napa because they deal in car parts, but you never know. Anyway, <clears throat> and I've already...
already punched out the holes as you can see that I'm going to use. Now for this, I'm going to be using three short radius PVC 90 elbows. <clears throat> now where I'm from, this is just a short radius PVC 90. Some people call it an elbow, some people call it a 90. You call it what you want. You have a long radius <clears throat> and you have a short radius. Yeah, so there's two different styles. I'm choosing a short radius because this is designed for chickens to stick their neck in. Let me show you real quick. In the end, this is going to be sticking in the hole like this. I bought a couple of this, couple of packs of Gorilla clear plastic silicone. In the end, the silicone is going to be right around here. The chicken is going to stick their neck in and get food from in the bottom of the thing. Well, this food bin is going to be full. And as they're pecking the food out, the food stays in here. And it's designed to where they get the food out, but they can't scratch at the food. They can only scratch right there below. That's what the design is for. So again, it's another weatherproof and hopefully waste less. So <clears throat> that's what I got going on when it's all said and done. It's, I'm going to have three of these short radius 90s in these holes. Food's going to be up to here. The chickens will be able to stick their head in and get all the food they want. Now in the process, we do have to take a hacksaw and cut part of this rim out so that way the feed goes in there. We're going to shut the video down for just a minute or put a pause in it. I'm going to get all three of these 90s cut the way I want them, and then I'll bring you back up and show you what we're doing. So give me just a moment. All right, guys, as you can see, I've got all, I've got all three of the 90s knocked out the way I was talking about. And we're going to put this thing back in here. Now, I cut the throat out. The reason I left that back portion is so that way I can attach a block of wood to it and mount the block of wood down to the plastic. That way the PVC piping does not move. Okay? And when it's all said and done, it's going to sit like this. Now we're going to zoom in real good so you can see it really well. Now, when it's all said and done, it's going to look very similar to that, and the bin is going to be full of chicken food. And it's designed to where the chicken can stick their head inside this hole, get all the food out they want, nothing drops on the floor, they can't scratch the food around. And like I said a moment ago, I'm, I've got some uh, Gorilla plastic silicone that I'm going to be wrapping around these holes to hopefully seal it off to where the weather can't get in there. So that's what we've got so far. And uh, I'll bring you back up in a little bit later. Now, one thing I will be doing here in a couple minutes, I'm gonna be taking a couple of small blocks of wood, something very similar to this, but I'm gonna narrow it down to fit on here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna mount it to the block of wood right. I'm gonna mount this to the block of wood back here and then mount the block of wood to the bottom of the plastic. That way everything is mounted in safe and secure, nothing can move. So here in just a minute, I'm gonna take time out to get my blocks of wood cut out, get it mounted in, put it in, bring you back. Anyway. So we'll catch up here in just a few seconds, guys. All right, guys. Here's what we've done so far. We got one piece of wood mounted to the plastic. And this piece of wood is going to be mounted down into the bottom of the tub. Okay, so uh, this is what I've just le learned the hard way. I was using these screws right here in order to try to get through the plastic. As you can see, I got a little piece of plastic trash right here in order to try to get through the PVC into the wood. Uh, I just now discovered the hard way that in order to get through something like plastic, especially as thick as this plastic is, I don't know if you can see the liner, but it's, it's a good quarter inch, maybe five sixteenths thick. Okay. In order to get through the plastic, 
self-tapping screws with a little drill bit head on the screw tip works really good at getting through stuff like this. But unfortunately, self-tapping screws will cause your little wood chocks to split. So I do not recommend doing it that way. So one thing led to another, guys. I'm just being real with y'all. What I did, I used, I'm coming back with these little bitty screws like this, the small wood screws, really, really small wood screws. And I used, I got a little drill bit that's a little bit smaller in diameter than the screw itself. I don't know if y'all can see that, but I done that. And then I came back and drilled all my pilot holes in the plastic itself. Once that's done, <clears throat> I put a Phillips screwdriver bit inside of my drill motor. Came back with the little screws and I mounted the wood chalk on there. So I'm going to do the same thing here in just a minute once I get all my wood chocks on. I'm going to take the uh, Phillips screwdriver bit out. <clears throat> all right, now what I do with that, rascal? What up? Okay. And then I'm going to put my drill bit back in there. I'm going to turn the tub over and I'm going to drill my pilot holes through the bottom of the tub. And then we're going to mount the 90s in place. That being said, I'm going to go ahead and get all this done and I'll be right back to you. All right, guys. I went ahead and uh, got the wood chucks. Plant, uh, uh, mounted to all of the backing of the PVC, all three of the 90s. Now, if you notice, I got two screws in there. Uh, the reason I went with two screws is because if you only put one in there, it doesn't matter where you put it at in there, the wood block has a chance of swiveling. I don't want it to swivel. So, the way it's going to be, it's going to be inside the tub like this, and then the wood block is going to be mounted to the bottom of the tub. Okay, so now what we do is we take some type of marker, mark the inside right around the wood block, turn the tub completely over, and then drill a couple of pilot holes inside of the marking. And when I get to that point, I'll bring you back and show you what I'm talking about. So anyway, we're going to pause real quick and we'll come right back. All right, guys. <clears throat> what I've done, I put each 90 in its hole with the wood chop facing down where I wanted it. And I took a marker and I marked outline around the wood chop about where it's going to sit on the inside. Then come turn it over right here and I can see the outline through here. So now I'm going to come back with my drill motor and my tiny, tiny, tiny little bitty drill bit. And I'm going to drill out two holes inside these marks for the pilot holes that will go inside the wood chops. So that being said, uh, let me get that done and I'll bring you right back. All right. Working on drilling my pilot holes, I figured I'd bring you back up and, and show you exactly what I'm doing here. This is the pilot holes where the screws are going to go inside the wood chops to hold the 90s in place. And the reason I'm doing this with a drill bit through this plastic is because wood screws don't go through plastic that well. I don't know if you can see it in the video, but I just got all my pilot holes drilled on top of where the wood chops are going to go. That being said, I'm going to have to turn this rascal around this way and hope like crazy I can do this while the video is going. Let me take this out, take the drill bit out, put this rascal in. And see if I can do this by myself. I've already told my wife I might need her help with this, but I'm going to try to do it on my own. And I can see right now, this is going to be a booger to do it by myself. Let me try to do it this way. Mm. 
Okay. This is not going to work. I'm going to have to have her help me out with this. So that being said, I'm going to go get my wife and uh, we're going to put these in place and then I'll bring you back up to show you what we've done. All right, guys. Let me show you what we've done. My wife and I had to work together to do this, possibly because the bin I'm using is a little bit too high, but it's the bin that my wife and I wanted. So what we've done, as you saw earlier, we chalked out the back, the, the throat of the 90s, and then uh, I mounted the block of wood, marked the inside of the tub where I wanted to go, then we came in and we mounted the chalk of wood to the to the uh, plastic on plastic tote from the bottom so that way looking at it from the inside all you see is this okay now i'm going to tilt it sideways maybe you can see it like this it's very very possible that if i used a shorter tub something like this and maybe I could have done it all by myself. But my wife and I wanted a taller bin. This one right here, this bin here is a 72 quart bin. Okay? Now you don't have to use a 72 quart. It's just what we chose to use because we've got 20 plus chickens and let's face it, they're eating machines, okay? Uh, but it's the size port that it's the size tub that we decided to use. And uh, the overall design is you fill the thing up with feed and the food goes up inside the throat. They're able to stick their head inside that 90 degree uh, PVC or the 90 degree, uh, uh, some people call it a 90, some people call it an elbow. You call it what you want, but all three of these are short radius 90s. Don't get the long radius 90s because it's still a 90, but the radius, the curve itself is a lot longer and the chickens won't be able to put their heads in there. So these are short radius 90s. Uh, so now the only thing left to do, I'm going to turn it over. We're going to use this Gorilla Clear uh, Silicone. <clears throat> We're gonna silicone around this, the holes that we punched with the hole saw. We're gonna let it sit up for the day. And then we're gonna fill it up with feed and see what happens. Now, the only other thing I wanna do, once we do get it set up, I'm gonna put the whole thing on a tilt like this. That way, the food is constantly falling down toward the, uh, the feeders. So anyway, that gives you an idea of what we're looking at, guys. And when it's all said and done, give me just a moment. When it's all said and done, here's the weatherproof part. Here's the weatherproof part, right here. Put your lid on it. Lock it in place. And there's the weatherproof part. Now the reason I went with a clear tub, you don't have to go with a clear tub. The reason I went with a see-through clear tub is so that way we can watch the level of food as they're eating it, and we know whether they need food that day or not. <clears throat> you don't have to go with a clear tub. We chose to go with a clear tub. <clears throat> so, anyway guys, that's the idea for this build. Uh, once we get it done, like I said, the only thing we have left to do at this point, we're going to turn it up like this. We're going to put the silicone around the, the, the pipe and the holes. <clears throat> we're going to let it dry for the day. We're going to try it out tonight after it's dried for a while. And, uh, I'll let you know how it goes guys, but you got the idea now. Hopefully I didn't miss anything on building this and showing you what I was doing. Hopefully you caught the whole thing. Uh, I'll just let you know how it goes. Let me know in the comment section below what you think about this one. Guys, there is one last thing I do want to add to this video before actually officially closing it out. If you're going to be doing this to your little, for, for your chickens, building this weatherproof uh, bucket type feeder or tote feeder or tub feeder, whatever you want to call it. 
if you want to be building something like this and you're going to be notching out these plastic 90s or elbows, whatever you want to call it, guys, I'm going to be completely honest with y'all. I used a table saw to do the notching of those plastic 90s. I do not recommend that because it is extremely dangerous to do that. You got to go very, very slow. You got to watch where your fingers and your hands are at. I do not recommend using a table saw, although that is what I use. If you have available some type of hand saw, like a hacksaw, I would strongly recommend a hacksaw. It's going to take a little bit longer, but it's a lot safer to do it that way. Or you can use a band saw of some type. Uh, but if you use some type of bandsaw, you're going to have to use some type of clamping mechanism to, to, to hold the 90 degree uh, PVC down. So I would strongly recommend either a bandsaw with some type of clamping mechanism or a handsaw like a, like a hacksaw of some type. Alright guys, when you go to get your silicone in order to silicone around the holes for the plastic to keep it from uh, getting weather in there, we chose the Gorilla brand because it happens to be a very well-known brand for being very strong. Look at the back. Go down this list on the right side over here. Scroll down that list very, very carefully and make sure that that glue or caulking is designed for what you need it to be designed for. As you can see right here, it says plastic. And that's what we need. We needed a caulking that was good for plastic. So make sure you see in that list what that tube of uh, uh, caulking is good for. Now, you don't have to use the Gorilla brand caulking. That's just what we use. It says construction adhesive right there. Projects and repairs. You can see it, okay? Uh, even on the tube, it says heavy-duty construction adhesive. You don't have to get the Gorilla brand. That's just the brand we chose because Gorilla is a very strong brand. So that being said, now, what, I, what my wife suggested is a very good suggestion. Now that I have finished caulking the, uh, the holes where the PVC elbows are at, my wife suggested put the whole thing on the back of the tailgate of the pickup. So that way the sun can help curate that caulking and dry it in there, pack it real good. So that's what it's doing right now, guys. Uh, as you can see, I've already got it caulked in place. And now we're going to leave it outside for the rest, for a few hours. Uh, while we do something else. Uh, now what, uh, what else are we going to be doing? Well, let me show you. We, uh. We have quite a few turkeys back here. Let me go ahead and I'm going to stay kind of back here and just zoom in. This pen right here, we have, uh, I think, seven or eight turkeys. Two of the turkeys, the big white ones, the male and female, which ones we call Tom and Snow. Let me, matter of fact, let me go ahead and bring you in. The, uh, the two big white turkeys, the one coming up to the gate right now is one we call Snow. She's the eldest hen. And that one back there in the back, we call him Tom. They are both a bit over a year old. They are broad-breasted turkeys. And those are the bloodline of turkeys that you will see in a supermarket during the Thanksgiving holidays. That being said, uh, as you might have guessed it just by when I said the Thanksgiving holidays, uh, we are going to be dispatching Snow and Tom today and cleaning them up for our holiday dinners. Okay, so we're not going to be filming the actual act of dispatching them because some people go nuts over well i'll just say kill or slaughter your farm birds uh i, I use the term kill or slaughter 
for those people who have a little bit more of a stronger tolerance for things of this nature or for farm life. But for those of you that have a little bit of a weak stomach or animal activist, uh, we're going to be dispatching these two white turkeys because they're broad-breasted turkeys and they are past, they are beyond ready to be dispatched and put in the freezer. Our other turkeys, all the ones in the back back there, as well as these two right here feeding out of the feed pan, they are still chicks, believe it or not. They're still chicks. They won't be ready for this process until sometime next year. So anyway, that's what we're going to be doing for the rest of the day. Anyway, now let's get back to the, uh, hang on a minute. Yeah, let's go ahead and get back to the uh, feed box. And uh, hang on. Let's go ahead and get back to the feed box, guys. So if you have any comments on the feed box, maybe you got a better idea than what I've thought about. My wife and I put our heads together and I said, well, I'd like to do this. And she said, well, if you're going to do that, what about this? And I said, well, I like this, but I don't like that. So my wife and I talked about it back and forth for a couple of days and we came to one final conclusion. So now we have the box outside on the back of the tailgate so the sun can help curate the caulking. A little bit later this afternoon, once we know the caulking is dried up, we're going to fill the bin up with food. And we're going to film it and let you see how it looks with food in it. And then uh, I'll just keep you updated and let you know how the chickens are doing with it. So at this point, uh, I'm going to put a pause in this video and we'll catch you back in a few hours once we've got food in the, uh, uh, in the bin. And I'll bring you back and let you see how the food in it looks. Anyway, catch you in a little bit, guys. All right, guys, here's the finished product. The bucket feeder that I was working on off and on all day after the uh, Gorilla silicone sealed up obviously the bin is not full but here's the finished product we're gonna zoom in and let you see the inside of this 90 or the elbow whatever you want to call it and here's one all I'm doing is taking one finger and I'm already at the feed right there I'm already at the feed right there. One finger. I'm already at the feed right there. I'm already at the feed right there. And as you can see, the bin is not even full. So this is designed where they can stick their head in and peck the feed out of there and they won't get any feed on the ground at all. So we're gonna keep an eye on things and we're going to let you know how it works out. But this is the finished product, guys. Feel free to comment in the comment section below. Like and subscribe. This is another homestead video on the Levron Homestead in Wyoming. Hope you enjoyed this particular build. Uh, as much as I enjoyed more experience of learning more stuff. I think we got a couple of chickens back there over my left shoulder back there. The majority of them are inside the little house over here. So I'm about to call my wife out here and let her look at what she helped me do. So I'm going to go ahead and flip the camera around let you look at the finished product one more time before I close the video out. And once again, the finished product, guys. I just now showed you how just one finger I was able to reach inside that 90 degree elbow and touch the food. That right there is designed to where they can stick their heads inside that little pipe, get all the food they want. I have never, I am 50 years old now, guys. I have never one time seen a chicken pick food up in his mouth and then drop it and then walk on it. I've seen him walk on it many times, but I've never seen him pick it up, then drop it, then walk on it. And this is designed to help prevent all that. It's another weatherproof chicken feeder like I built with the bucket system but hopefully they won't be able to waste any and they'll be able to get all the food they want out of this like I said feel free to like and subscribe to the video feel free to comment in the comment section below tell me what you think over and out guys this is homestead video number two on the Levron homestead in Wyoming thank you for watching